Sponsored by JMR Rentals, professional digital cinema and broadcast rentals in Brooklyn, New York. To find out more, visit their website, jmrny.com. Hello and welcome to No Rest for the Weekend, where we go behind the scenes and talk to the creators of independent entertainment. I'm Jason Godby, and today we're giving you our preview of upcoming film festivals for fall, winter 2020. As you know, due to COVID-19, many film festivals have had to push back, reschedule, and many are going virtual, as is the case with the upcoming film festivals we're going to talk about. So let's get into it. October Film Festivals. Lots going on in October. First up, we got Starable Fest. They will be going virtual running October 14th through the 18th. This is their third year in operation. Recently, I caught up with the founder and CEO of Starable, Ajay Kishore. Here's what he had to say on what to expect from the festival this year. Traditionally, the festival has been a, a two and a half day physical event, always been in New York City. Um, and what we've done is really build a, um, a pretty jam-packed schedule of screenings and workshops and panels, social events, um, all around celebrating the creativity that's going on in the web series and indie TV world, but also creating opportunities for creators to learn how to be more effective in their careers and thinking about how to evolve and be more effective at their craft. And so what we've tried to do is really translate that experience into a virtual festival. So this year it's gonna be spread out over a, a longer period. It'll be five days, October 14th to 18th. And you know, we know that people don't wanna sit at their computer for eight to 10 hours a day. We're already doing that so much for our day jobs and things like that, right? And so it's gonna be a little bit more um, spread out the programming. So a handful of panels, a handful of workshops, the screenings that you can screen at any time, right? Really leveraging the fact that people can make the most of their, their day um, as we're all kind of quarantining at home. But then thinking about like, how do we create live conversations? So talkbacks around the screenings, those are live experiences conversations, the panel conversations, offering opportunities for, you know, people that are attending the festival virtually to still ask questions of the, of the panelists, giving them the opportunity to really talk to people that are at the highest echelons of the industry and getting that sort of, you know, organic um, conversation. I think it's going to be a, a really fun and, and um, interesting experience to put this together this year. So look for that complete interview with Ajay coming up. It'll be online October 14th. And for more on Starable and Starable Fest, visit starable.com. The Soho International Film Festival is scheduled to go online from October 15th through the 22nd. This is the 11th year in operation for them. I recently spoke with Executive Director Sybil Santiago, and here's why she is so excited about this year's festival program. For those who might want to check out the film festival uh, this year, uh, you know, for as an audience member or even as a filmmaker, what can they, what, what are you expecting to see and, and how's it going to work? Like what platform are you guys going to work on? How are you showcasing the films? Give me some highlights and so forth. Sure. Um, we did a lot of research in the platforms that are available out there. Um, about two years ago, we started working with Eventive uh, for our ticketing and they've been amazing to work with. Um, they, we're very... Good, we love tech, good tech and clean tech to organize the festival and having them on board as our ticketing service has really made a big um, help, uh, given us big help. So when they started the virtual platform on their system this year, they were obviously in the front runner of the ones that we were looking at. And um, so far, so good. And it's also very user friendly for the filmmakers, which makes it easier for them to be able to help us get and propagate the content that we need offline. Can you give me some highlights as to uh, which films, like, can you talk about some of the features and so forth that you're going to be showcasing this year? Yes, I can. It's a bit tough because we have a lot of really good films this year that brings up a lot of conversation. Um, 
particularly in our documentary festival has our festival has, has um, kind of gotten a a pretty good reputation, I guess, on the documentary side, uh, being picked up by a lot of buyers. So we are getting more and more um, content that is really worth a, a, a conversation. Um, a few of them, uh, actually one of the, are, are probably uh, best uh, documentary that we have to, to see here is uh, called The Air of the Time, which is um, by director Julie Rowan. And that film is about these female fashion designers like Donna Karen, Diane Van Postenberg, Caroline Herrera, you know, and they speak about how they started in the business and the challenges that they've had to face being um, a female designer in the industry in fashion. We also have a documentary about climate change, uh, the, the Race to Save the World, which is, again, another major conversation. So I expect those Q&As to be really interesting. Uh, we have a documentary called Opika with this Nobel Prize nominee for multiple years, Father Pedro, uh, about Madagascar and, and the, the sort of cities that he's built from the poor neighborhoods of Madagascar. On the features, we have some great premieres that are coming in the U.S. features, uh, like a film this film called Boyer and the film The Never List, which has some actors from the Nickelodeon series, The Descendants. And then we have also uh, world features that are world premiering with us and US premiering. Uh, Terra Nova, Philophobia. Philophobia particularly is a great film to look out for. This is a film from the UK from uh, filmmaker Guy Davis, who is actually a Soho alum, a multiple Soho alum. He started his first uh, short film with the festival years ago and actually won an award. And since then, this is his first feature film and has already had multiple offers for a distribution. And I believe he has signed with one. So it's, um, it's exciting. Um, it's, it's also great to see the filmmakers that we've, we felt really strongly about their talent as they were starting out and to see them actually succeed and sort of move forward and go to their next level in their careers. Uh, another one is uh, Millennium Bugs, this feature that we have by director Alejandro Montoya, also a Soho alum that, you know, started with short films that was in the festival. And, and now, you know, he's, um, he's done his features. This is the second one, I believe, and, and successful in it. Um, so it's really exciting. It really is. <laughs> The festival will be screening on the Eventive platform, and you can find the full interview with Sybil Santiago coming up soon here on this channel. For more on Soho International Film Festival, visit their website, SohoFilmFest.com. The Chelsea Film Festival will be running virtually from October 15th through the 18th, celebrating their eighth year. They'll be screening on the Festival Plus platform. And the Bushwick Film Festival, which we've covered before here on this program, We'll be going virtual as well from October 21st through the 25th. The virtual program will be screaming on watch.bushwickfilm.com. In November, we've got NYC WebFest. They've announced their official selections and award nominees. They're gearing up for their first virtual festival, which will be running the 13th through the 15th of November. The festival will screen on the Eventive platform and will feature 52 projects consisting of both web series and short films. Festival founder Lauren Atkins had this to say about the upcoming festival. We are excited to bring the quality content that NYC WebFest is known for to a worldwide audience. Over the course of the weekend, we'll have the video on demand mixed with live Q&As, workshops, and panels. One thing we're excited for is connecting creators and audience members with unique networking opportunities. A proper interactive experience that's been missing from most virtual festivals. The exact schedule and ticket details will be released in the coming weeks. For more information, check out nycwebfest.com and you can follow them on social media at nycwebfest. In December, Female Voices Rock will be running from December 4th through the 10th. They're going virtually as well on the Festival Plus platform. Their official selections will be announced on October 15th. They had to reschedule due to conflicts with other festivals. The founder of that festival, Catherine Delaloy, was recently a guest on the show. Here's what she had to say when I asked her about the festival's inception. As a filmmaker, I got really tired of the lack of opportunity I had as a female filmmaker. I kept seeing the percentages of films getting accepted into film festivals by women, and they were very low. It is getting better, but it's still shockingly low, the amount of 
um, films being accepted by females. And then I started Female Voices Rock as a way to just be able to find opportunities for other women because I felt like I didn't have them. And then I just wanted to create something that would be able to promote and just, yeah, and just offer opportunities. So I went into this mission of starting to like meet different people and I started connecting with different industry um, executives and people I could never meet funny enough as a filmmaker because they would never answer <laughs> the call for me. But as soon as I approached them as a film festival, they, they started getting in touch with me and that's how I was able to like line up the judges and have all the opportunities I now have available for other filmmakers. Female Voices Rock will be hosting a filmmaker spotlight series two weeks leading up to the festival. They will also have a virtual meet and greet and panels throughout the week. Some of the panels will include scripted podcasts, how to bring your script to audio play, women directing blockbusters, making an Academy Award winning short film, breaking into the writer's room, representational film and TV criticism, and women and cinematography with more panels to be announced in the coming weeks. The festival will also host a live virtual awards party featuring lots of breakout rooms for filmmakers to network. And that's all the news we have for you today. Thanks so much for taking this trip down the rabbit hole. For more of our content, including our movie reviews, visit our website, norustofthweekendpodcast.com. Don't forget to like, rate, and subscribe on your favorite podcast app. Once again, I'd like to thank Ajay Kishore, Sybil Santiago, Lauren Atkins, and Catherine De La Loy. And, of course, I want to thank our sponsor, JMR Rentals. For more on JMR, visit their website, jmrny.com. For Behind the Rabbit Productions, I'm Jason Godby. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Yeah.